Good day everyone, especially to our Dean, Dr. Abante, and to my classmates. I am Vincent James Fuzalan, and I will be reporting the 8th chapter of our book, which deals with the securing information systems. And what do we need to know about the security of our business information? Nowadays, um, businesses, even this is small, medium, or large corporation, have different streams of information. This may come from HR department, or uh, sales and marketing, or finance. And all of this information are being gathered into one big system, or information systems. So, with this, many people are having an access to our data our information and how are we sure that our information is secured in this system so let's get to talk about that in this video but first let us define the word security in layman's term security means that being away from harm or being away from threat or being inside a guarded area or confined area but in information technology, security refers to different policies, procedures, and other technical measures applied to system to prevent an unauthorized access or alteration or manipulation of the whole system design and information. So technically, security is blocking away any people or any um, malicious uh, devices, malicious softwares for being, for them to penetrate our system, for them not to alter anything on our system, and for them not to um, take away any information and uh, being used into different unlawful activities. So that is security. Now, let's define the word control or controls. It is defined as a different practices to ensure the safety of the organization's information system and accuracy and reliability of the records and operational adherence to the management standards. So our information right now is very vulnerable. There are so many threats around us that, is, that wants to get our information, whether this, this is personal information or information of different companies. Way back then, before the technology came, our information is being um, secured into huge vault or well-conditioned area for them not to be vulnerable to fire or molds and, uh, and, that, and that information to be and passed along into different centuries. But now, in the, in the modern world, in the technological world, still our information is vulnerable, but from different um, entities right now, like hackers or malicious uh, softwares and such. And like what I said, people now have more access to information instantly allowing them to be savior and more informed than ever before. Our information right now can be easily accessible through one click, one tap, one Google away. We can use our internet or wireless fidelity that anyone can see, that anyone can use, that anyone can penetrate. Especially this large public network, the internet, or even in a small group, internal local area network, wherein we are just connected in one small network. Even phones, even tablets, even computers can connect this, can connect to this uh, network. We can exchange emails, uh, IMs, or P2P sharings, point-to-point -point sharings. That makes our information very vulnerable. Now, let's talk the different threats, software threats, that can infect our system. And that is what we call malwares or malicious software. So there are different malicious softwares 
that is very known to us but we have um, so little information so first let's talk about virus or viruses last 2020 our world was shot with covid with coronavirus that was it came from china then going to europe then trans pacific to america and the whole asia and it it became a pandemic worldwide um virus so let's talk about virus in the computer it is software that attaches itself to different files data applications without the knowledge of the end user like with the coronavirus we don't know we are infected until the last minute that we have the symptoms and it's like the virus in the computer we don't know that our computer is already infected with the virus unless otherwise the system flickers the system has a missing component or doesn't function well so the virus attaches itself to that without us knowing it's like a surprise the other the other malicious software or malware that is very common here is warm warm is an independent computer programs that copy themselves to other computer over a network so it is like a virus but virus is just on one system but form can copy themselves they can they can imitate themselves to to different computers in just one network i'm gonna give one example of form this is very very uh this is well known around the world and let's talk about this let's talk about the history of this one it is called the I love you virus or the I love you worm. So I love you virus is created here in the Philippines, here in Manila, Philippines by O'Neill de, de Guzman, which is way back then in creating the I love you virus in 2000. He is only 24 years old and he is using this as his undergraduate thesis, the I love you virus. So I love you virus also known as the love bag or love letter for you virus infects windows users all over the world with the letterhead i love you and the attachment love letter for you that text that vbs so this i love you virus started just like an undergraduate thesis experiment then afterwards the first thing he did was going to Singapore. Eventually, since the definition of worm is um, an independent program that copies themselves in computer over a network, the network he used is the Outlook in the Windows application. Then, the first thing he did is going to Singapore. Then after Singapore, it went all out the world. It infected almost all um, window users. And upon uh, investigation, upon investigation, they saw that the first team came from Manila. And right now, Onel de Guzman is um, right now Onel de Guzman is have a small um, electronic shop here in Manila so I think he did it he didn't finish his college degree because of this one so very magaling siya and naalala ko one of the stories of my my college instructor kaklasi niya dato so that's it that's the one next one is the Trojan horse Trojan horse Brief history, Trojan Horus is a Greek um, Greek uh, war gift. This is a war gift in uh, Greek era. So the Trojan Horus history is like they are already 
um, defeated, they they already raise the white flag. They give a Trojan horse or a large wooden horse to their enemy, as a as they concede. But little did they know, once the gift is inside the castle, there are so many army. There are so many armed personnel, armed people inside this huge um, wooden horse. And they attacked from the inside. That is the um, concept of Trojan horse uh, malware. So it is a malware that appears to be a legit program or legit file but that's more than expected. So technically this is just a virus but a double version or a triple version of this. So one of the uh, example is the crypto locker. So the crypto locker uses photos, videos, or text documents and it infects the computer. The next one is the spyware. So spyware is a small program that monitors the movement in the system. It includes uh, web surfing and other activities. So technically, spyware doesn't do anything on your computer. It doesn't infect your computer. But it is spying your computer. It is spying what letter you input, what password you input, what um, website you are watching, and other activities. So technically, someone is spying you. And that um, that activities, your activities that is being spied can be used into unlawful acts. So that is spyware. The internal threat in our system actually is us, the employees. So we already talked about the malware, the external threats, the, the threats that uh, other people can give us. But the internal threats of the information securities are the employees of the company. The end user's lack of knowledge about the system leads to different struggles. Especially in our um, network right now, many like Generation X or Boomers, they are not yet familiar with the systems that is being introduced right now. So there are struggles. There are struggles like forgetting their password, and these are the opportunities for different hackers to penetrate, to alter the information or even the whole system. So, let's talk about the hackers and computer crimes. So, spoofing and sniffing. Spoofing, um, spoofing is like uh, creating a an additional uh, person with a, a with hiding their true personality or true identity just to sniff different relevant information in the system. Denial of service or thus attack is flooding of network or service with multiple communication processes of request for the service to crash the network and penetrate. So whenever they want to penetrate the system. They are sending multiple instructions, multiple um, communication passes, multiple uh, requests for the system to crash. And that is the best opportunity for these hackers to penetrate, to come in. So the next one is the identity theft. Like imposters collecting relevant personal information to comment fraudulent activities. So identity theft is very is very wide here in the Philippines. They are using like social media um, accounts, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, to act like um, to stand as the person. There are so many scammers using this to gain profit, to gain money, and this is actually a computer card. This is already a computer card. So, one of the one of the largest group here in the Philippines that actually not commit but commit computer crime they already committed the computer crime but they are some of the people call them the unsung heroes because they post different let's talk about it the anonymous Philippines before the 
before the the elections they have posted this the, as the pandemic arises Filipinos need fast internet to communicate with their loved ones do your job the corrupt fear us so they hacked the PLDT Twitter account to post this kind of statement a very vague statement and before the election they even hacked the Comelec uh, the government website just to post this statement clean elections they are the anonymous Philippines and that's why we have different legal and regulatory requirements for different electronic records management in the United States there are the, co- the so-called HIPAA, the Health Insurance Portability and Accur- uh, Accountability Act. It is the simplification of billing and automated transmission of data in various health care providers, which can be stored for six years. Actually, all the examples in our book is in U.S., but I will add some here in the Philippines, some acts in the Philippines. Uh, last 2012, the RA number 1017-5 or the Cyber Prevention Act of 2012 was imposed here in the Philippines. It is the application of security measures to ensure confident, confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the data. So, um, in the Philippines, we already have different computer forensics. Uh, their main job is to recover data from computer while preserving evidential integrity, securely storing and handling recovered electronic data, finding significant information in a large volume of electronic data, and presenting the information to a court of law. So here in the Philippines, we have so many branches in the legal department of our country that has a forensic department like the NBI Cybercrime Division and also the RA number 1075 of 2012 imposed the creation of Department of Information and Communications Technology. So here are the different examples of our um, forensics in the technological part of our country, the Department of Justice, Office of Cybercrime, anti uh, cybercrime Group of the Philippine National Police, and the Department of Information and Communications Technology. Now, let us um, differentiate the words general controls and application controls. General controls deals with the design, security, and the use of computer programs. So technically, these are the hardware, software, manual operations, and administrative control of the whole information system. So technically, these are our tablets, computers, uh, mobile phone and the different software we are using Microsoft Office Suits, Word, Document, Excel uh, ma- different manual operations like barcode scanning um, QR code scanning uh, even this um, uh, recording voice recording, video recording are the general controls of the information system on the other hand we have the so-called application controls Um, it uses unique controls to perform a specific task which includes both manual and automated procedure so technically it uses the ipo process or input process output one of the best example i can give is the grocery stores the grocery stores have their own application that controls the um, inventory, the cash management, and also the checking out of their of their um, system. The cashier area, one of the best example. Why is that? The cashier area has this barcode reader. Once the um, the item is being scanned on the barcode reader 
the computer processes it for how how much, how many items are being scanned, etc. and the total price, and then the output can be the receipt or the final um, amount that should be paid by the customer. So that is the IPO. Next one, let's talk about the security framework. So um, everything starts from planning. So one of the best way to start our um, information system is to assess the risks around us. So assessing the level of risk to the company of certain information. The next one is the security policy. This consists of different statements about the information risks and accessibility of saved data. Like, for example, um, the HR department can only see the documents of the, the employees, but the HR can't see the payroll of the, the, uh, the employees. The HR can't see what are the sales of the company. So that is um, the accessibility of the safe data. The, um, the groupings, the different partitions of the different accessibility of different people to different data. So disaster recovery planning is like you are planning for the restoration of disrupted computing and communication devices. The second one is related to that, the business continuity planning, the restoration of predation after a disaster strike. So disaster recovery planning is for short-term um, risks uh, like brownouts and such. But the business continuity planning is for long-term uh, planning after a disaster. So for for short term, we have this called PSU or power supply unit. But for long term, you should use the um, generator for us to sustain the the running of our information system. So the information system audit on the lower side can be the last part of the framework because it examines the overall security system of the company. So there are so many, many um, project managers that runs the, the system first before deploying them. So uh, here are, on that run, on the run, the auditor can see the different, um, the different bugs that can be seen on the system. So the tools and technology in safeguarding our information resources. So we have different, different um, tools that can that can safeguard our information system. The first one is the identity management. It is the automation of the process of keeping all the tracks of the end user. And the next one is authentication, the ability to know the person who is accessing the information system. So, for example, our phone, we can enroll password or PIN or, or um, even biometrics on, on access to different um, rooms. We can have uh, identification cards or the smart cards we can tap into and even biometrics. The, what are the different biometrics that we can use? Um, a fingerprint, iris scanner, facial recognition. So there, those, those are some. We can also have firewalls. Firewalls prevent or block an authorized user from accessing private network. From, from the definition of firewall, it prevents fire from one house going to another. So it's just the same. It's just preventing um, different unauthorized user entering or penetrating our private network. Anti-malware softwares, on the other hand, these are um, applications we can buy to prevent, this can prevent, detect, and remove malwares like viruses, swarm, Trojan horse into our system. So 
there are so many anti-malwares, software or antiviruses we can have. So some of it is Norton, Kaspersky, and Avas. Then let's go to the protocols of our um, information system or the internet itself. Some we have the SSL or the previous term is TLS, the Secure Socket Layer or Transport Layer Security. It enables the encrypting and decrypting of information. So for the internet itself, we have the HTTP or the SHTTP. Secure Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It is used for encrypting and decrypting data over the internet. So let's talk about encrypting and decrypting of information. Encryption means the process of uh, transforming text into ciphertext for protection. For example, I myself type good morning and I want to send this to all of my classmates. During encryption, this, this good morning text will go to um, encryption process. So the good morning text will go into process, into our system. Then it will have the different algorithms that we will be using to process this. And this good morning text will not be readable anymore. This good morning text have already a password or keyword or uh, uses binomial or uses binary system or different numerical uh, number system. Upon receiving of one of my classmates, the text is still in this um, cipher text. Then afterwards, it will it will process um, into different uh, algorithm also then it will be a good morning text again so it's like I have myself a letter I will send this it will be closed and will be mixed then it will be received mixed and it will ar be arranged by the end user or the receiver and it will be the same as what I have sent. So it is the process of encrypting and decrypting. So let's talk about the cloud and mobile security. Cloud, uh, protecting data stored over cloud network. Like what we are using right now in our section, we have the G Drive or the Google Drive. Here, uh, we are all editors. We can edit data. We can edit um, we can upload uh, different files. So the security here is on how we can limit the people accessing the Google Drive. And for the phone, uh, mobile users should be required to use the password features found in every smartphone. Actually, we have multiple ways on how we can um, we can secure our mobile phones. We have the password, we have the PIN, we have the iris or facial recognition. We even have voice recognition and the fingerprint scanners. So that is all my report. It's all about securing information systems. It is the chapter 8 of our book. Again, I am Vincent James Ponsalan, living the code security that matters. Thank you everyone.